Today, we're gonna talk about high efficiency milling. It's about to get crazy. It's about to go down. It's about to go down. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC, and today we're gonna to talk high efficiency milling and why we do it. All right, so we have a million videos out there. You guys have seen them dropping over the months and years where we're basically taking tools, going full depth, small radial, and we're going at incredible speeds and feeds. We're showing tools like this guy, the Harvey 3, with a long flute dropping down in titanium, four times diameter, 8% step over killing it at 400 to 550 surface foot, which is unheard of in titanium, but it's because of the style, it's because of the approach, all right? We have other videos where we're in Hastelloy and Monel, not just 400, but K500 also. We're in A286, we're in Inconel, and we're throwing out crazy speeds and feeds. Back in the day, people would look at me and they'd be like, oh, Titan's roughing aluminum at 800 inches per minute. He's gonna break the machine, he's gonna break the spindle, he's gonna break the tool. But guess what? We're still here, the machines are still good, and this is what we've been doing for over a decade, machining for crazy aerospace companies, right? And the companies, they're not saying, hey, Titan, you're gonna to break tools. They're saying, hey, we love this quote because you are half price, you're 60% of what other people are charging. And the truth is I can only do that because of the types of tools that I'm running, right? And the techniques that we're using to take the material off quick. Time is money. All right, so when you look at the surface foot and you look at the chip loads, you can bank that information and you can use it in your shop. But you gotta make sure that you use the same tool and you gotta make sure that you're using the same technique to produce the same results. High efficiency milling is the process of taking a tool and instead of going old school, where you take a big cut down here, you're actually spreading the love along the flute, okay? So instead of milling up here, you're actually milling down here. The old school style shows you starting at the top and working your way down, and you flex the tool in doing so. And the engagement forces heat into the cutter and the workpiece, and it limits the tool life, and on and on and on. But in high efficiency milling, we're basically dropping down using the entire flute. And because you're using the entire flute, you have rigidity in the flute. Now, instead of taking a huge cut at the bottom, you're actually taking a smaller radial. But if you equal out the MRR, you're actually taking a bigger cut because of the depth of cut you're doing. So when you saw me milling 100 pounds of titanium off the lion, I was four times diameter. So with a three quarter inch tool, I was three inches deep with that 8% radial. But if you calculate the MRR, that is a huge amount of titanium coming off of that workpiece consistently. So another thing that I'll say is, why do tools last longer when running a high efficiency tool path? Because of the heat. Instead of being massively engaged and having all of that heat down here, you actually have a light radial, therefore the tool engagement is not as much. It's lighter, which reduces the pressure and reduces the heat. Heat is everything when milling. And here's another thing people don't talk about. Points of contact. This particular Harvey 3 is a six flute tool. If I was just cutting with this part of the tool, I might have one or two points of contact right? Maybe three with a lot of pressure. But as I drop all the way down and I hit flute after flute after flute after flute, each one is a point of contact. And the more points of contact that you have in that cut all the way up limits vibration and instead adds to the rigidity of the tool, giving you a better surface finish and allowing your tool to last longer. Points of contact is huge in roughing and in finishing. 
So just because we're running fast, it does not mean that we're gonna burn up tools. The tools actually last longer because you've taken the heat out, because you've added the rigidity, because you've done all the things necessary to be successful. Now people ask me, hey Titan, how do you get your speeds and feeds? And uh, the honest truth is from experience, right? From my experience cutting, always pushing the limits and keeping track of my MRR, my material removal rate and minutes in cut for this tool. You know, another thing that I'll say beyond our experience, I actually utilize other people's experience because I actually call Canamental. I talk to the tool guys, I talk to the reps, I talk to the designers and I pick their heads and I ask what tests they have done and I document what they say. They're the inventor of the tool. So I'm going to use what they say as a baseline and then I'm going to see how I can improve it. Machining is an art. We constantly have to figure out how we can get this tool to take off more material consistently and for a long period of time so that we can actually make good money. Now all of that information is banked and documented so all my programmers use the same data or greater but never less, right? Because we have a standard in place for Inconel and Monel. And the cool thing is we're giving you guys that standard. Every time you watch these videos where we're cutting materials, look at the surface foot, look at the chip load, look at the depth of cut, look at the material, look at all of it and bank that information so you can grab it when doing quotes for crazy aerospace companies and you can win that bid so you can actually bring that money in, make payroll, put food on your table and that is what manufacturing is about. All right, so keep watching the videos. You guys have a great day. I'm out. Boom.